our involvement in the project is that we met with Steve Dorney at the Institute of Sound and Vibration Research at the University of Southampton um, many months ago and decided that Hampshire Dance would be interested in working with Steve on a collaborative dance science project. I work for the University of Southampton. In fact, I work for the Institute of Sound and Vibration Research there and my job is Outreach Coordinator. Yeah, we have a, a big project which is called Sound Matters and it's all about um, engaging the public in different ways with acoustic science. And as part of that we worked with creative partnerships in Southampton and through them we, and we met people from Hampshire Dance. We decided it would be interesting to get two, uh, two artists, a dance artist and a musician and composer, place them in the Institute of Sound and Vibration Research for a few days and see what happened, see what they came up with. At the Institute for Sound and Vibration Research, there are two rooms. One is a very dry, dead room called the Anechoic Chamber, and the other is a very, very reverberant space with a six-second echo. The Anechoic Chamber is a bit strange. It has lots of sponge, they look like cheese slices, um, and they, it kind of absorbs all of the sound, so if you turn away from somebody, you can't really hear what they're saying. It's very muffled. And we found that it was very much easier to work in the reverberant space. We found that the anechoic chamber <clears throat> just uh, did, was very, very uncreative. It didn't have any kind of influence on us whatsoever. It just made it, us not want to talk to each other. It made us not want to, him to play and I didn't want to dance. It was just a very pressurised, strange environment. So we decided to go into the echo chamber where we kind of became children and ran around like idiots. Well, I did anyway. Because everything sort of bounced off each other and everything became more expressive, it was much easier to create movement. The problem with trying to work out music and choreography in a reverberant space is that you can't talk very much because it just disappears. It's a bit like trying to talk in a cathedral. Uh, most of the words get a bit lost. A lot of the time we spent just making music and just improvising choreography without explaining much in English. So it's kind of, it makes sense in sort of artistic terms that we could only deal with the tools at hand, if you like. To be honest, we're really looking for something experimental to see whether um, we could work with Hampshire Dance to produce something that would be entertaining, would be informative, and from their point of view, that would, would keep something very artistic and interesting from the dance side. We were hoping very much that they would be inspired creatively. It was also really important that what they came up with at the end of their time there was also a piece of art. We didn't want it just to be an educational tool. We wanted something that had artistic integrity and could stand alone as a piece of art as well as being um, an interface between dance and science. One of the challenges for the music is that the science that we've been looking at and the spaces that we've been dealing with are about the physics of music or are connected with the physics of music. So in a sense the music is going to be about the physics of music. So it's kind of it's slightly circular. So I've got to reflect some of those ideas that we've been talking about, such as reverberation, diffraction, reflection, resonance, all these science terms that have direct impact on music, I've got to somehow reflect that in a musical piece, so that's quite a challenge. Hampshire Dance is very interested in finding out if dance can be used to explain scientific concepts and to perhaps um, look into scientific research in a new and interesting way using dance. We're also um, very keen to find out if dance can be used to explore scientific concepts, particularly to communicate them to young people. So we're here at the ISBR and we've brought Rachel in from Hampshire's Dance Company. Yeah, I've worked in the anechoic um, chamber first, and it's, it does make the sounds very dead. And that was Rachel. Was she was very good. She really responded well to um, being shown around and being shown all the scientific facts and things. Um, and then once we were in the chambers, we showed her both chambers, and she felt exactly the same as, as we did. She didn't like the anechoic chamber, um, so we stayed in the, in the echo chamber, and I taught her some material which I'd been playing around with. Um, I then passed it on to her, it became her movement almost, but she was, she was great, she really responded very well. I'm always fascinated by the way dancers work because it's completely different to the way musicians tend to work, especially classical musicians. With a classical musician you plonk a score or a part in front of them and they try and reproduce what they're seeing, whereas dancers are very much better at improvising and just starting to move. So I'm always in awe of dancers. They come in, they start moving, and then they gradually shape it and they refine it. Hopefully it will 
be able to move forward and we'll be able to make a piece, um, create the music with Pete um, and work closely with him to get the right sound that we want and to work closely with the young people involved and, and get them involved in creating. We're very pleased with what's happened so far. The artists um, came up with some really interesting creative ideas and, and both felt that there was scope in developing this further. So now that we've finished this pilot phase, we're hoping to commission a longer project where the dance artist and the musician can work together over, over a slightly longer piece of time to create a new piece of dance and music for um, a full youth dance company. The pilot went brilliantly and I can see that there's, there's real mileage in this so hopefully we'll secure a little bit more funding to take this on a, on a more on a bigger scale to take it to more areas more people to work with a larger number of people and from there just to, to really to come back and think about it as a as a methodology really for us to say is this a great way of doing public engagement in science and I know people have done this in the past in different fields but it seems to work really well with sound and vibration partly because of the, the, the physicality of dance as part of that process, they'll spend a little bit more time at the ISVR and hopefully so will the young people so that we'll actually take young people into the institute. They'll get to look around the facilities there and, and see the research that's going on firsthand. Um, and at the end of it, we'll have a, a performance of a new dance piece, I hope. It's been a bit of a milestone, really. We've, we've worked with arts organisations in the past, but it's the first time we've worked with a dance organisation. And it's, as I say, it's, it's, got, it can, it's got mileage, it's got legs, it can go somewhere. Yes.